Welcome back to Studio 701. It's time for Music with Michael. Michael will introduce us to one of his musical heroes. That's right. His name is Richard Torrance. Let's take a look. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Studio 701. This is Music with Michael. I have a very important guest here today, one of my musical heroes here in North Dakota, Mr. Richard Torrance. Richard, thank you so much for being here today. It is my pleasure. Now, I know your story, but there are thousands of people out there watching that want to know your story. Who are you as a musician, and what is your connection here to North Dakota? My name is Richard Torrance. I was born right here in Bismarck, North Dakota in 1950. At a very, very early age, I started um, playing with musical equipment that my parents had bought me as toys. And I mean, I have pictures of me having a strapped on Mickey Mouse guitar. I must have been three or four years old, you know. And from that point on, they just kept on feeding me instruments. And then right around 12 years old, um, my brother-in-law gave me an old beat up acoustic guitar that I think he had found at a yard sale or something. It had a couple of strings on it and it was warped and the strings were that far off the neck and everything. But my mom said, well, I'll buy you some strings for you if you want to learn how to play it. And I said, okay, let's do that. So within three days, I had taught myself three song, three chords and I could sing and play a song. And again, she just, my mom just kept on feeding me more information. Eventually, I was taking piano lessons. I took some guitar lessons from a, a very famous guitar player that actually played with Lawrence Welk, I've heard. Unfortunately, the Beatles came out very soon after that, and that ended my, I don't want to learn how to read anymore. Yeah. I want to be like them. Yeah. So you're stranded on a deserted island, and obviously you have a wonderful stereo system on this deserted island. Of course. You can bring three albums of your choice to listen to for eternity on your deserted island. What are these three albums? Okay. There is one piece of music that I listen to and have been listening to now for since before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a chant CD, mm -hmm. um, and it's by Deva Kramal. You know how sometimes you're listening to a song and you can anticipate where the where the chord is going to go to. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever you get to those points with this particular songwriter, he takes it somewhere different. Oh, okay. And he makes the musician go, whoa, yeah. whoa, what did you do there? Yeah. You know, and I just love that stuff. The second one is Let It Be by The Beatles. Great one. Simply yeah. because if it wouldn't have been for those wonderful four people, mm -hmm. I don't know what I would be like today. And, and Let It Be, isn't necessarily my favorite album of theirs, but just the title and the song, Let It Be. Okay, so Let It Be would be the second. Okay. Excuse me, one second. Oh, the third one would be... Go for it. My most recent musical project that I'm very, very proud of. More proud of this project than probably my albums right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's called Nothing Is Holding Me Down. It's by Jennifer Lynn and the Groove Revival. I would bring this one because let me tell you, I listen to this sucker every day. Yeah. And I'm still not tired of it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. You got it. Maybe I, I, I can some get an amazing, advanced copy. I do some amazing guitar playing yeah. on this, if I do say so myself, and keyboard playing. So, yeah, I'm really proud of that. I'm looking forward to hearing that. So that would be my third one. All right. Uh, a magnum opus is someone's greatest work of art or contribution. Uh, do you have a magnum opus at this point? I would think it would be uh, my release of Rio de Janeiro Blue. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was just uh, from the moment that it was recorded, I just had a real special, special feeling about the song. And I had never thought of myself as a songwriter that where someone would take my song and record it. Yeah. I was the kind of type of songwriter that wrote songs specific to me yeah. of my sound. Uh, you know, this is going to be for me. Yeah. This is my song. I'm going to sing it. The first cover was Nicolette Larson. She was a very famous uh, writer in the era of Linda Ronstadt. They were good friends. And she had a couple of hits. Uh, Gonna Take a Lot of Love was one of them. So Billy Payne now has a copy of Rio de Janeiro Blue. It hasn't been released yet. And he's playing, he's playing it for uh, Teddy Templeman, who is the producer of Little Feet. Mm -hmm. Billy is in Little Feet. Teddy Templeman's gonna produce their newest CD. So he just happens to play, oh, this is what I was working with. This is guy Richard Torrance, and he puts on Rio. Tommy LaPuma, who was in the Warner Brothers building at the time, happens to walk by that office while Rio is being played, mm -hmm. stops, 
goes, what's that? Oh, it's a song, uh, I just was on this thing, Rio de Janeiro by Richard Torrance. Says, Can I have a copy of that? In the same day, within two years, there was a release from Nicolette Larson. The next year, there was a release from Randy Crawford. Richard is such a cool guy, and later on in our show today, we have uh, a recording. He's going to be performing uh, Rio de Janeiro Blue for everybody to well, hear. Well, I want to hear it because he said that's his, what do you call it again? A magnum opus. Your magnum opus. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about yours, but we get to hear Richard's later mm -hmm. in the show, so very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And still to come on Studio 701, Carmel chats with the owner of J&S Wood Finishing. Stay tuned.